Hey, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Coffee with the Captain. Today, I'm joined by my special guest. Yeah, special, you are. Special Ed. <laughs> special. Special Ed. <laughs> Too many concussions. <laughs> and today, I'm joined by my special guest, Joel, the traveling angler. What's going on, brother? Good, good to doing? see you. Good I'm to see good. you. So today, we wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, sheep's head. Sure. So right now is just a great time of year for us with sheep's head and joel has got something really neat uh to show us i think oh the new jig the new jig yeah these they're the bottom sweeper jig uh i just did a video on them um the owner sent them out to me let me pull these out one of these let me hold this up and it's a, it's a banana jig. Uh, it's a patented design by Bottom Sweeper. And it, it's balanced. I know they can't see this, but um, you can see that hook stays up no matter what. It is pretty neat. Instead Unlike the, of, yeah, th these ones. The style where the... It, it hangs down, yeah. Because yeah. what is this one? This one's a swing jig. Right. And that one's, and that that one's a shorter it, shank. This one here is a little longer. Mm-hmm. And I know the shorter shank helps with um, like it snagging up less because there's less out there to grab onto stuff. Yeah. But with this swinging around, I mean, these, when I'm fishing the bottom and it's bouncing with the current, I end up losing, I don't know, four or five of these a day when I'm out fishing. Yeah, me too. Because they're just getting hung up on stuff. I don't know if it's because this hook that's swinging around, um, you know, there's just a lot more play in it to where it'll snag up on things where this one when you have your line on it because you know how you keep tension right so as it's bouncing it's doing this and it's it rolls over flat. stuff yeah so you can feel it like if you're drifting the current with it you can feel it on the line um you'll feel it bouncing over the rocks and stuff but like these ones you'll feel it bounce and then all of a sudden you feel like you have a bite you know yeah and then you like that was a, and it's stuck on something, you know, where these, they don't, they flow freely until it's back behind your boat. Now, that's something that uh, fishing with you, I started doing different. I used to, uh, when I would put my bait on, put a crab on or a shrimp, I would usually let the hook tip just barely stick out. And my thought was it would like a scale on the tip of the hook can keep you from setting the hook sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I thought by having that, that tip just barely exposed that I would have better hookups. But when I started fishing with you, you were burying the hook completely in the bait. Mm -hmm. So it was totally hidden. And I had, a, and maybe it was just the day, but I had a better hookup ratio uh, by doing that. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the jig that you gave me to use I don't think it was the banana jig. No, it was these it, ones. Was it the yeah. sweeper style? Yeah. Uh, it's It actually worked better for me than the Carolina rig or the split shot, which mm -hmm. I've been fishing the split shot rig, I think, for the last two years, pretty much exclusively when it comes to sheep's head. Mm -hmm. and I, I knew there were other things out there. I just hadn't been fishing the jigs. So I did order some of the bottom sweeper jigs, and I'm really looking forward to uh, getting these in. And they come in, in different sizes. And I see this is a 3 8 here. Mm -hmm. What size is that? that this is 3 8 And that's not, the one that you've been, mm -hmm. been really wearing yeah. the fish out with? Yeah. And I'll, I mean, I'll adjust it based on current. Um, you know, if it's ripping and I want it to sit by the dock or the structure, you can go with the heavier ones. I think they have them up to like 3 ounces. Well, now I so did buy, I went that. ahead and ordered uh, multiple packs of each, but I got the quarter ounce, the three, three eighths ounce, and then the half ounce. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if the current's heavier than that, I may have to look at something different, but uh, normally that, that three eighths is, is a pretty good weight for me in most situations. And I figure in the faster current, that half ounce would probably do the... The well, trick. but even the three eighths. So I was surprised because I'd been fishing my buddy Harry. He's the one that turned. Well, I turned him onto it by 
sharing the video, so he went and bought it from another YouTuber, but um, he has heavier ones, and I was using heavier ones, and Dan Schaefer, the owner of Bottom Sweeper Jigs, uh, he sent me these ones, and I was thinking 3 8 ounce was going to be too light, but we were fishing a pretty good Russian current, and it was actually... It bounced real nice over those rocks and moved with the current and I was still, it was heavy enough to keep line tension. Right. But light enough to feel the bite. So we were fishing heavier ones the other day and I switched out to these right after I got them. And, uh, and I, I, I think I caught like six fish where the guys with the heavier ones were missing them. And that happened to me <clears throat> with the Carolina rig trying to fight that current I would get so much lead on there that I couldn't feel the sheep said yeah. pick up the crab yeah. and, and you know there's always a little bit of even when you're when you're trying to keep tension you you really can't the tension is between your reel or your rod tip and the weight and the weight yeah and and you get too much weight there and the crab you know i've got 18 inches a liter the crab is floating up the sheep's head got it and he's moved on or he's ate the bait and i may not feel that that bite and then uh you know the rest of the tackle not just the weight but you know too heavy a line and and some of the other issues so uh like i said fishing the other day with you we had uh much better result going with that lighter oh, yeah. jig head. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of the jig head. I like the sweeper, so I'm really interested to see how these uh, bottom sweepers work. So the first time I used these, I was fishing the, um, what's this one called? The loose hook one? Uh, anyways. <laughs> These ones, <laughs> it's a different type of sweeper, swing jig. Swing jig, yeah. Sheep's head jig. Um, I was using these and I was hooking up, but I'd fight them for about one, one thousand, two, one thousand, and then come flying out. And I know they weren't spitting it, not like I didn't have them hooked, I don't think. I think yeah. they had this ball in their mouth. So, like, while it's sitting down there, they come and you know how the big ones suck it in? Right. So I think it was all getting in their mouth. And so then when I set the hook, their mouth shut. So I'm fighting them. And then they realize and they open their mouth. And I think because see how that was just tangled up like that. Right. You know. So then that'll fly out of the mouth without getting the hook. <coughs> as soon as I put these on. And I'm not lying. I missed maybe 10 fish with this. Where I was catch, getting them to eat. And then I switched to this. And I literally cast it out. Brought in a fish, the, cast out, brought in a fish. The one that you gave me the other day to fish with was a uh, a football head mm -hmm. style jig, but it had the fixed hook. And and I was having better mm -hmm. better hookup ratio, and I think that that was the key. And I'm I'm completely with you. I can see where that would happen. Where this is a longer shank, but it still has so much movement. It's really made for uh, like a trick worm. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that that would be ideal bait for that. But more so for the sheep's head, I really like that that fixed hook. And I know, too, up north where they're fishing for the taw tog, yeah. uh, that's the style jig that they're using for those. <laughs> it's actually labeled yeah. tog. Sheep's head you know, tog. It's a tog style jig. Now I've seen some similar, but this head design is definitely different. So he's got a patent on this. Mm -hmm. it, it's from what I know, the design on it is it's perfectly balanced so that it sits on there with that hook up, no matter what way you spin it. You know what I mean? That's so the, you're not going to be coming in and grabbing anything this way. Your so hook doesn't go sideways; it stays up. Not that it's weedless, but it makes it kind of weedless, especially less with, likely to especially get Especially with the crab on there, yeah. Yeah, I like and, that. And these, I'm actually hooking the crabs differently now. If I'm missing bites, I'll do the same thing where I run it through the leg and hide the hook in it, and then the crab sideways on there. Right. But on these, I'll hook them through the back so the crab is actually sitting with his legs out, like he would be on the bottom, 
And then when they come to eat them, they're getting all that hook in their mouth. So it looks like he's just sitting on that. Yeah, on yeah. That the jig. whole tip of that is hidden inside of him. And then this is coming out like up between his eyes behind his head. Okay, gotcha. So that when they come, you know how they'll come and, and bite the top of the head off and you just have legs? Right. They're right. getting hook. Yeah. When it, when it, and it, I put it dead center. And if they're eating one side or the other, I'll try to like pull it to the side and see if there's it helps. No, but. There's nothing worse than pulling up to check your bay <laughs> and, and you've got the back legs on there and your hook is sticking out. Yeah. And that's, that's usually how, or how for a long time and, and was able to catch fish. But for a long time, that's how I hooked them. I would go through one of the legs mm -hmm. and come out and, and leave the hook exposed where it looked, you know, it, to me, I, I thought, well, it looks kind of like another leg. Yeah, sticking out the So maybe side. they won't notice that, hey, there's a big hook sticking out of this crab. Mm -hmm. uh, but having the hook pointing in the right direction, I think, is, you know, that, that might just be the key. Well, yeah, so again, I'm really excited about trying these out. Because they come down, if I'm not mistaken, they come down and they eat it like this. So that's the nice thing with this. When you have your tension, too, when he bites this, it pulls the line like this. Right. So you feel. It's almost setting the hook itself. Well, yeah, you can feel it when they do that. That gives you that little bit of rod bend. Yeah, once you get that little bit of rod tip bend. Yeah, yeah. Once, because these are real sharp, too. These are the sharpest hooks I've seen on, like, the sheep's head stuff. Like, see how these curve over a little bit? Right. If you notice this one, it's not it's straight. perfectly straight. Yeah. And yeah, I sharp. think they're that, sharp. like, on this bent, I think maybe you, they can, it'll slide out. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know exactly why these work so much better than these. But well, I think the hook's yeah. sitting straight up. The simple, is my sense. The simple fact is, if I see... Your cooler full of fish and a photo, and this is the jig head you're fishing with. That's what I want to try. Yeah. Pink, pink chartreuse, and orange. I want to fill my cooler <laughs> full of fish, and yeah. if this is what's working, I want them. I, I yeah. need them on my boat, and uh, we're definitely going to give them a try. So, like I said, I, I went ahead and ordered some. Um, I, I, you know, I'll put a link it's for uh, bottomsweeperjigs.com. Dot com. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, check them out. They're like three bucks, three and a half bucks, I think, for a package. Um, and you don't you don't lose as many. I as ordered these. twelve packs. I got assorted sizes. I you know I want to make sure that no matter what the current is, that I've got the right size. Now the hook size is is a uh, one o uh, on all the different weights that I ordered. So yeah. on the quarter, the three eighths, and the half, they all had the same size hook, um, which is funny because I really, I really downsized on my split shot rig to try to help convert some of those bites I was getting mm -hmm. into fish, and I kept going with smaller, stronger hooks, like still the strong size hook. four, six, or something like that, down, all the way down to ones. <laughs> So, you know, size one, that's what I've been fishing with as of late. And again, it's not like I'm not catching fish, but I feel like I could convert more of those fish. These are a size one. It's offset. I'm sure you can't see that on the camera. That thing is tiny. Yeah, it's tiny. But, uh, yeah. and it's an offset hook. But that offsets the ticket know, too. To try to, it helps. again, help create helps. some of those bites. But it is exactly. a little bit smaller. Yeah. Not a lot, but just a tad bit smaller. Yeah. And th this one does curve around where that one's straight. So, mm -hmm. you know, that could be why I'm missing some of those bites, too. If I'm prematurely trying to set the hook, if I feel him pick it up and he's holding his mouth, if I'm pulling it out and, and the hook's not and then, and you know, pointing in the right direction. Another thing I'm learning <coughs> with the sheep's head is... They like they they'll just go for the head, because they just want that, that juice head out. Meat. Yeah, yeah. And and well, I like, noticed in your photos that and and I don't know if when you're setting the hook, if you're pulling sideways or if you're coming straight up vertically, but I did notice that the hook was in the corner of the mouth yeah. on about ninety percent of those fish. It's either the corner 
or, or dead right center roof. roof. Yeah. So and that that really it, got me excited because that's that's where you need mm -hmm. it on those sheep's head with all those teeth. I think it's the shape of it. So like when they bite it, when you set that hook, if you notice how that it's smooth transition, you know what I mean? So I think it pulls it right in their mouth. Like it'll just pivot out. The reason I was getting them in the side is because we were drifting docks. Okay, got you. So we we're casting up in the shallows, pulling it out to the pylons and letting it run along the pylons. Um, I forget where I was going with that. So if you were <laughs> if you were new to sheep's head fishing, yeah, th this is a great uh, a, a great hook to start out with this this bottom sweeper jig. Um, where would you suggest, if I'm new to a body of water, how would I pick a spot? Let, let's start with first, if I didn't have a boat okay. and I wanted to go try to catch a sheep's head, where would you suggest I start looking for them? Uh, it depends on area, but like down in Tampa and stuff like that, I saw most of the sheep's head on like rock jetties or where it drops down, rock you know, 10 wall. foot deep with a rock seawall, they'd hang yeah. out all in there. Um, where here, I fish them more around like bridge pilings and stuff like that, so find a pier. Is there a water depth? Does that make a difference? Um, I think time of year and water temperature is probably relevant to where they're at, you know, in the water column, yeah. um, but I mean, I've heard of people catching them in three foot of water, but oh, I've, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like you caught one in my backyard in three foot of water. Yeah, yeah. And then my first one, which was bycatch, was in Tampa Bay out by a rig, and there was a little guy freelining shrimp nowhere near structure. Right. He you just know, and he was just swimming and he ate it. Same kind of thing with the bayou. Yeah. You know. And he was, um, he may have been headed to another dock. Yeah. Yeah, but in answer to your question, pretty much so anywhere that you can access rock pilings or structure of any sort, that there's barnacles, crabs, anything like that. Um, I know there's more crabs in brackish water, like fiddlers and stuff like that. They're primarily in brackish. Um, so depending on the time of year, I know here when they're spawning, they go out. Right, so the pass right. lights up when they're heading out or coming back in. Right. But the rest of the season, if I'm not mistaken, they're up in the brackish water in the bayous and rivers. Generally when we don't target them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're really good cold water fish, and honestly, I've never eaten one in the summertime. But I, I, I do know that certain species of fish taste better different times of the year mm -hmm. it, it can't just be in my mind but like a a walleye in cold water is a delicious fish it's, it's good to eat but only in cold water if you catch them in the summertime they just don't taste the meat's not as firm it's always mm -hmm. a little mushy and it's just not as good i've only caught uh sheep's head in the winter which our winters here are pretty mild i don't know what the temperature was today 70 something, something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah welcome to winter in florida you know um but i'm still cold <laughs> but uh you know that's the the water temperature's down uh i think the last time i fished it, it sun popped out and it actually got up to like uh, the water temp was like 65 degrees and uh we were in some shallow water and and that's where we were finding sheep's head mm -hmm. or, or you know, 15 foot, mm -hmm. so relatively shallow. That's pretty yeah. much so what I've been fishing, yeah. eight to 15 foot recently. So let's see, we talked a little bit about that. Um, just real quick too, what do the sheep said eat? What else can you catch them on besides the crabs? Sand fleas, fiddler crabs, um, and I can, shrimp. I can put all those. Pieces on this jig head oh yeah yeah harry in my bottom sweeper jig video <coughs> he actually had a huge shrimp on one of these like a big old sucker and he was catching sheep's head on them while nice. i was catching them on fiddlers and then 
Uh, there was another guy, and he, Joe, he was doing just little shrimp pieces, and he was getting them too. Um, all my bycatch before I started targeting them was on shrimp. Gotcha. But I hear oysters work great. Put them in like a pantyhose or a little sack thing. Right. So it stays on the hook. Uh, I know you can do that with blue crab and stuff too. Chunk up pieces and put it in the sack. Um, sand fleas. I've heard of worms. Really? Worms, yeah. She's Never had on tried worms. a worm. I heard that. But I, I have been wanting to try the oyster thing, and I may shoot a video on how exactly that works. Um, I know some people that have been really, really successful. And I just talked to a guy. He's a, he's a captain in Alabama. And he was telling me where he... He used to win a lot of the sheep's head tournaments in our area. But he would go to Alabama to catch fish. And the record fish he was catching, he actually gave me some spots to go check out. So uh, we're going to have to go make that run, I think. Um, but I really do want to try the oysters uh, just to see if they work as well as, mm -hmm. as I think they could. They're definitely going to put a lot of scent in the water if you put them in that bag. So that, that may be enough to... Uh, chum up the fish yeah. and then uh, I was actually talking to a guy who was telling me he uses the frozen oysters mm -hmm. I've heard of cooked ones too because they stay on the hook better and the cooked ones so I, guys you know, in Louisiana that... swear by Cajun <laughs> Cajun, Cajun Cajun season I'm not uh, joking I believe they it. had fish picks <laughs> hey if you if you got picks it's hard to argue with and then another thing chumming Right. It, 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 night and day. We were fishing these pylons, and Joe and Harry weren't scraping. And I'd scrape, 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 wait a little bit, drop my bait down, yank a fish out, get them off, get them in the cooler, scrape, scrape, scrape. And I caught like three fish. Well, they weren't getting any action. So I've definitely noticed that when I scrape or knock barnacles or whatever off of the structure, it definitely helps get some over in the area now i i do know in certain areas you're not allowed to to scrape so that's something you need to check your local fishery and make sure that you know in your area you can do that but it really does almost any kind of fishing you're doing chum is kind of a if it's legal key. yeah as long yeah. as it's legal like colorado we can't chum for anything all fresh water, they don't allow it. <clears throat> That's interesting. Yeah, you can't pull live bait from the body of water and use it either. You have to bring your bait. Yeah, that's insane. Have a receipt. <laughs> that's <laughs> insane. Yeah. That's all we do. We go catch live bait and immediately <laughs> drop it right back down on the spot. Absolutely. That's the natural forage. That's what the fish are there eating just naturally. So why would you not want to use that bait? That's, that's my thing. Yeah, yeah. That's a dinner bill. Let's go eat. Huh? <laughs> it's time to eat. Hey, until next time, I've been Captain James. I'm Joel. <laughs> We're both hoping you have a latte fun fishing on your next adventure. I'm out. Right? And then, it, you, you know, you test it, you pull it up.